question was, can I name companies in the uh, clean tech, green tech sector that can replace oil, go, cat, oil, coal, and gas? And there are financial managers looking for places to divest from fossil fuel investments and start investing in a newer and greener economy. There are so many. It's a wonderful and burgeoning field. Uh, as things now stand, Canada only has, well, globally, uh, it's, um, at the moment, it's a $3 billion, no, it's $60 billion globally. Canada has $1 billion of that. And the uh, Pemita Institute study said that by 2020, if we put our minds to it, we could increase that to $3 billion. So that would be healthy for our economy. It doesn't mean that you have to shut down all your fossil fuel operations, but we should be diversifying our investments. We have quite a few right here in the riding, um, uh, in, uh, near the airport in the industrial park. There's a very strong wind energy company called Aeolus Wind. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a very big development in the Peace region in northern British Columbia. It's working on developing um, a, a methanol that would be a, 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 a fuel that burns without carbon, and it would, so they're, they're very green and developing right in, in the region. Uh, there are so many individual companies, I hate to go out naming them. There's a lot of really exciting work going on in tidal energy. There are low flow tidal devices, basically like, um, if you picture almost like a piece of pipe, the fish could swim through it, but in the circular inside of the pipe, the rings of magnets, which collect the energy from the tide as it goes in and out. Uh, the tidal energy industry is, uh, I think right now, Nova Scotia wants to invest a lot in it. But I know from the Vancouver Island Institute of Technology right here, that there are companies doing work in low flow tidal. They're actually generating electricity. And if we could get BC Hydro to agree to buy electricity from them, BC Hydro does not have the system that Ontario Hydro has of what are called feed-in tariffs that allow a renewable energy company to know they're going to get a certain price per megawatt, certain price, that that helps them invest and build, but also it helps the, the utility have a diversified range of sources. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, the green tech, clean tech field is huge. Uh, basically renewables, photovoltaics, I haven't mentioned that, roofing tiles, they're now so thin, you just, just get like a layer across your roof that actually can give you all the electricity needs for your house from photovoltaic roofing tiles. Uh, there are also some really cool, they just, there's a, a company that's promoting solar uh, photovoltaic. See, the difference between, most people think about solar, solar's great for a home where you plan with passive solar. You say, okay, where's my south-facing wall, and I don't want to be shaded on that side. And I, actually, the, the biggest utility in California, PG&E, has a whole team of landscapers who will go out to a person's home and help them figure out where they want their trees and where they don't want their trees. Because PG&E has figured out that you know, a, a, a unit of energy saved is just as, as valuable as a unit of energy bought. So they've done a lot in pioneering, encouraging consumer choice in more energy efficient refrigerators. Um, this, I think the most creative thing is that they'd actually go to a home and say, here's where your trees should go so you can reduce your air conditioning costs and reduce your winter heating costs. This is what we're recommending. This is how you should site your house. That's passive solar. Photovoltaics, in case anyone doesn't know, are they actually convert directly sunlight into electricity. That's how you can have uh, photovoltaic roofing tiles that actually produce all the electricity you need in your home. And if you have a very sunny day, you can sell it. In some jurisdictions, you just sell from your home out to the grid. Uh, the new one that I saw recently is very hard to keep up with all, and I was really excited about this one. It has, it, it, the price is down on photovoltaics. The price keeps coming down. One of the biggest reasons, the big bulk development of photovoltaics right now is in China. But this, this cool one that I saw the other day online, it, they look like little flowers. They're, and they're revolving photovoltaic <coughs> petals, if you can imagine that. So they, they capture the sun in all kinds of directions very efficiently. 
and convert it directly to electricity. So the only hurdle that we have in having renewables totally replace coal, oil, and gas is the problem of storage. Because there's, there's way more solar energy than human economies need to run everything off solar. The problem is, as everybody who wants to criticize solar energy will point out to you very quickly, is what do you do when it's raining? What do you do when the sun's not shining? Uh, same thing for wind. What do you do when the wind's not blowing? They don't have that problem with tidal because that's kind of constant. Well, the gap that we have to fill is to figure out how we store the excess from when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing, how we store it so it becomes baseload power. So it's, there's enough stored in something. Um, there are many competing technologies. As soon as we break through with the storage solution, fossil fuels are going to be extinct because we're not going to need them because this other source is cheaper. So the, um, the I know I said I was going to give short answers, but I'll just finish this one. Uh, the, the, secret, the former Secretary of Energy in the U.S., Stephen Chu, who's a, a Nobel Prize winning physicist, I heard him speak at the Copenhagen climate meetings, and he, you could see he was so excited about what he regarded as some of it. He, the, he, as, as the U.S. Secretary of Energy, he put a lot of money into certain things that were, you know, con fairly conventional, like photovoltaic roofing tiles and wind and, you know. But where he got really excited was his long shot investment, if he could get a manganese-based battery, he said, a, 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 he said battery technology and research on batteries has pretty much stalled over a couple decades. We got our batteries, we were happy, we didn't keep pushing the technology. He said, you know, if you had a swimming, a swimming pool sized magnesium battery, you could power a city. Now, he's a Nobel Prize winning physicist, so I thought that was exciting news. That may or may not ever work. His, the other things that other countries are doing, Holland, the Netherlands, is investing a lot in storage from their wind energy, which they have a lot of, and sometimes wind energy can get so, so as it gets to be a bigger part of your electrical grid, you have a problem that if it's really windy, you can actually sort of blow your whole grid. So you have to make sure it's not, you, know, you have to store it. So the Netherlands is working on compressed air storage. Another storage potential is using the energy from wind or solar or whatever to produce hydrogen. And then your hydrogen becomes your, your storage. But, but in the mix of all of this is so much exciting potential. And the sad news is that Canada is losing out on this because we're not investing. We do need something positive. And fortunately, there's a lot out there. And the, the good news is that when you look at the International Energy Agency reports, you'll see how, I mean, last year was um, the breakthrough year for installed wind and solar. They began to lose money as companies, but they still broke.